I want to first of all thank everybody for coming. Thank you to Handball for playing early and we'll get racquetball started in a little bit. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging that these courts were built and we have the privilege of playing uh, the sports we love on Treaty 1 lands, the original territories of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, Lakota, Denny peoples and the homeland of the Red River Métis. So this project really came about in a response to court closures and the opportunities that were presented to us from COVID. So I'm not sure there's a lot of positives from COVID, but we're going to take this as one of them. Um, Racquetball Manitoba knew about this fenced in area where a 10, approximately 10 foot wall existed. And when we came to scout it out, we found that the handballers were already utilizing this space. Uh, Councillor Jeff Browati, he did an early site visit and uh, immediately offered financial support from the city of Winnipeg. From there, a partnership was formed. I'd uh, like to thank Jim Peters uh, for his early work in securing these partnerships. We were then able to secure COVID funding from Racquetball Canada and of course Racquetball Manitoba and the Manitoba Handball Association stepped up as always. We had a vision of what this space could be and we worked together to make it happen. So thank you to everybody. But uh, one main thing I want to say in my mind, this project never would have come to, to fruition without the expertise of the JTF conglomerate. John Friesen was the driving force behind this project. His ability to do the engineering work and the construction work were invaluable to the project. His patience with the City of Winnipeg staff uh, was very appreciated. Ha ha. Um, I, was definitely, I was definitely ready to throw in the towel more than a few times, but uh, John is, would not allow it and therefore we forged on. I, <laughs> I was always so, so pleased to be CC'd on an inordinate amount of emails with photos, often videos, as were many City of Winnipeg employees. But uh, as we saw all those emails and photos and videos, we saw the project come together. Uh, seriously, John, for me personally, on behalf of Racquetball Manitoba, and hopefully I can also say on behalf of Manitoba Handball, uh, thank you for everything you did to make this come together. So I would now like to invite the presidents of uh, Rackwell Manitoba, Diana Bradbury, and of the Manitoba Handball Association, Ron Roos, to come up and say a few words. Welcome everyone. As president of Rackwell Manitoba, I'd also like to thank all of you who worked the last two years to make the courts a reality. I'm appreciative and proud that Rackwell Manitoba has a stake in these courts as they kind of offer exposure to the sport of racquetball and handball uh, to communities that uh, might not otherwise have the opportunity. Um, so once again, thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> On behalf of the handball community, I would like to thank uh, Racquetball Canada and Racquetball Manitoba for their financial assistance and work, especially Jennifer. And I'd also like to thank John for all the work that's uh, gone into this facility. The 10-foot wall was here in the, in the 90s. On one side was a paddle ball court, and on the other side there was a line on the wall where the tennis players played. When COVID hit, we started playing and with the low sun in the sky and a 10-foot wall, you could miss the ball anytime. The sun would get in your eye. So again, I would like to thank the people and the organizations that were responsible for the three-wall court and the refurbishment of the one-wall court. Thank you. Okay, John, we're gonna all go in the side now. Ha <laughs> ha
That's a perfect, perfect, perfect dynamic metaphor. <laughs>